Throughout the decades of the 20th century, the topic of women's body image has been paramount in popular culture, with the goalpost for women constantly moving. In the 1920s, the emergence of the flapper movement celebrated a slim, almost boyish figure. A few decades later, and Hollywood was promoting that full hourglass look, but from the 1950s to the 1960s, America saw a transition from the pinup girl to the supermodel, or as they called it back then, the Twiggy look. And this is where rumors about Jackie Kennedy come in. You see, in the media narrative of the time, the first lady probably fell into that latter category, but she was secretive about these matters. So it's very difficult to say for certain. What we do know for sure is that she had a very complicated relationship with food. And it's been reported that she survived on a single daily ration of a baked potato drenched in caviar. Today, we'll recreate that famous dish. Caviar, the high-class dining luxury. Whether at home or in restaurants worldwide, this is a food for the wealthy elite. But what makes this delicacy so special anyways? Well, let's start with the basics. The word caviar comes from the Greek and Persian words of Averon and Havia, translating to egg and fish roe, respectively. Fish roe is the fully ripe internal egg of fish. Caviar itself is the salt-cured roe of the sturgeon species. Traditionally, the term only refers to roe from wild sturgeon in the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea but sturgeon from the North American coast and others have joined the list in what's considered caviar in modern day. Apparently, caviar was abundant in supply in the areas where sturgeon fish was found as far back as 1240 AD, which is why older countries like Russia enjoy it as a standing part of their cultural tradition. It wasn't until the 16th century that caviar entered the European market and became a luxury good for the royals. In fact, there was even a time in British history when the sturgeon was only reserved for nobility, knighted as the royal fish. In the early 18th century, Russia brought its caviar to international trade, instantly becoming a luxury item, with Iran starting to produce caviar as well for export around that same time. Persian caviar became known as some of the best quality caviar available worldwide, and by the 19th century, the food was pretty much known everywhere. These are really nice, clean, but not peeled potatoes that are coming from organic farm. I assume that the first lady would prefer organic. The potatoes will need some time. Usually they take about one hour to cook through. Now I just wrap it like a candy. I think this would be a good moment to explain why caviar is treated as a delicacy. You see, in the 20th century, sturgeon were so widely available that the price of caviar plummeted and it was frequently served as an appetizer in high-end restaurants. This didn't last long though, as overfishing depleted the sturgeon species, nearly driving them extinct. Caviar became rare once again and reserved for the super wealthy. Back in Jackie Kennedy's time, the beluga caviar she ate was valued at up to $10,000 per kilogram. Obviously, those prices were not scalable, and so people began searching for other fish species to make caviar from. Salmon, trout, and whitefish were all used as substitutes, but in the eyes of the elite, none were considered true caviar. This is because it's the species of the sturgeon that makes the caviar so unique. Today, sturgeon farms are slowly emerging in places like France, China, and the United States, Italy, Bulgaria, and Poland. However, more and more fish are being considered as producers of caviar, as the sturgeon species dwindles and people's appetite for caviar only grows. Perhaps Jackie Kennedy's food habits were so unusual because she never cooked for herself, she never really needed to, having grown up in a wealthy family and then later marrying a rich man who became the President of the United States. Rather, she hired chefs who often specialized in French cuisine. In fact, Mrs. Kennedy considered herself a descendant of French royalty and modeled her soirees at the White House accordingly. She had many chefs throughout her lifetime, one of whom, Marie Scubin, became a trusted family servant even after Jackie's death. 
She went on to write a cookbook slash memoir detailing the foods she cooked for Jackie Kennedy, oddly excluding that rumored meal of a baked potato with caviar she ate daily. All the dishes she ate were at the height of sophistication, but the first lady watched her intake religiously, and after heavy eating, was said to fruit fast. So all in all, it's difficult to pin down the truth, as in addition to the caviar rumor, it was also said that the first lady drank a glass of champagne daily and smoked like a chimney. The diet was particular because not only potatoes that she would garnish with caviar, she would actually add caviar to different things. However, this what I found out, all of her meals were rather light. She wasn't big into eating like big feasts. However, later in life, apparently she indulged a little bit in Greek food. So such a potato was usually presented in her kitchen with a cottage cheese. And that seems to be right because many sources claim that she was a big fan of cottage cheese. I'm pretty curious about that. I've never eaten like potato of caviar. Apparently she liked the black caviar more than she liked the red one. I thought that maybe we can try with both. None of the sources said how much of the caviar did she actually use. I assume that if she wanted to make a meal, that would be pretty much a good amount. So there you go. Jackie's Kennedy famous potato with caviar. I'm pretty much curious how does it taste. Mm. The potato is very nice and creamy. The cottage cheese is like a perfect thing for that. But the caviar makes it taste intense. Perhaps an interesting takeaway from this story is that a diet like this is weird, but people taking interest in celebrity diets to the point of spreading rumors and publishing books is even weirder. Who knows, maybe the first lady loved eating, but had too much anxiety from the spotlight to hold down more than a potato with a little caviar. Or perhaps gossip columns got the ball rolling with this one, as tabloid journalism existed in the 1960s, just as it does today. In fact, the first lady's legacy may have been strongly impacted by this type of sloppy journalism. You see, the 1960s was a time of significant cultural and social change, and the media landscape reflected these shifts. Gossip columns were a prominent feature in newspapers and magazines during the decade, covering personal lives, romances, and scandals of celebrities, public figures, and even political leaders. In the case of Jackie Kennedy, they reported on her public appearance, romantic life, and physical appearance, which was bound to have some impact on her eating. Anyhow, things got quiet following her husband's untimely passing. Jackie Kennedy suffered a period of mourning as she played a prominent role in the planning of the state funeral, which took place on November the 25th, 1963, and was modeled after that of Abraham Lincoln. From there, she sought a life of privacy to focus on raising her family by moving to an apartment on the Upper East Side of New York and working as an editor. She ultimately remarried to a wealthy Greek shipping magnate and passed away on May the 19th, 1994, at the age of 64. Needless to say, the public was devastated. You guys should know that I do not like caviar, so I'm going into this one with a little bit of prejudice. I mean, it's caviar and cheese. Far, man. 